thank you guys. The reason I wanted to do that is for all of you just to see what kind of cross-section of the community we have today from C-level executives to you know CEOs, CFO, COOs to small business owners. Really, it's kind of a, a cross-section. We've got a lot of representatives from UT, from all the hospitals that are being construction, constructed now in Frisco, Texas Health Resources, Scottish Rite. Um, you name it, you know, the people that are making this community run are here today. And so I hope you all get to know new people today. Go meet new people um, and, and network. And we're just going to jump right into this because we have a lot to talk about. And I really want to get to the star of the show, uh, Mr. Femi, um, to tell us um, his history and his vision for this property. But I did want to kind of give you an overview. So what we're going to be talking about today is what we call the Fields Track, which is essentially kind of the northern third of Frisco. You know, what makes this such a unique opportunity is it was owned by one landowner, the Fields Estate. Um, but just for some scale, this is the parcel that we're talking about. The city of Frisco is actually going to be working with Hunt Realty and FEMI to master plan these 2,500 acres. Um, this property essentially terminates where UNT is going to be built. And so we're already having discussions and master plans um, as far as how this development can tie in to the university campus. And, and, of course, the developer wants to coordinate with that as well. So that's exciting. That's going to be kind of the southeast anchor of this um, and really drive up north. On 380, of course, we have major retail expectations of the to tollway in 380. Cinemark is being built right now. Um, just west of that is a $2 billion project that's coming through zoning right now called Project Lesso. Um, which is going to be kind of a new style mall that's going to be directly north of this property. And then last night at the city council meeting along the tollway, we just essentially voted um, for the Cowboys to bring their distribution center to Frisco. So that was a really exciting development. Um, we're very proud of that. And it's going, to, it's going to build an industrial district kind of along the eastern Dallas North Tollway. So as you can see, over the next 6 to 12 months, planning and zoning and city council have a lot of work to do. But after that period, essentially, the rest of Frisco is going to be zoned and planned. And that's pretty exciting. Um, so how do we do this? How do you go about finding the type of developer that we want to do the caliber of project that we want um, um, to really pull off building what we can we'll consider one of the best developments in the entire country? Um, and of course, those of you, I'm so excited to be able to introduce Femi to Frisco. And I like to joke, in real estate world, he's like Madonna or Cher. He's just known by one name. <laughs> I'm not sure anyone even knows his last name. Um, I'm kidding, it's his company name. He does that just to remind us what it is, I think. But everyone just knows him as Femi. Um, he's known across the country. He's known internationally. Um, his projects are worldly acclaimed. Um, the mayor of Plano refers to Femi as his secret weapon and why Plano was so successful. Uh, in fact, when we had lunch a few weeks ago, he told me he had to go have lunch with the mayor of Plano to break the news to him. <laughs> I wish I could have been at that lunch. <laughs> but we're so excited to have him in Frisco, master planning our largest tract um, in the history of the city, maybe the state, and really setting Frisco's course for the future. And I'll give a quick introduction. Um, he's the president and CEO of Carahan Properties, involved with projects all over the United States, including Legacy Town Center and Legacy West Developments in Plano. He was instrumental in all the corporate relocations that Plano has had over the last five to ten years. Um, guaranteed their buildings when they would be delivered on time and delivered every single one. Um, what makes him and separates him from other developers is why he, him and I kind of started geeking out the first lunch that we had was that he doesn't just build buildings. That's easy to do. He builds things for people. He has attention to every single detail. When he was taking me around Legacy West, he was showing me how every plot, um, pot in Legacy West had its own internal sprinkler because he didn't like how water overflow discolored the tile over time. I mean, it's that kind of attention to detail that he has. 
Um, he's in demand everywhere. The city of Plano thought he had retired. We're glad he's come out of retirement to help Frisco develop this. Please join me in giving a warm Frisco welcome to Femi. Come on, sir. Now you have to live up to that introduction. Wow, there's no way that one can live up to that introduction, but <laughs> I'll try my very best. Well, we're honored to introduce you to Frisco today. Everyone in Plano knows who he is. You're going to get to know him here in Frisco uh, very, very soon. But I would love for you just to share your story. How you got started from, I've, I've heard the stories of how Shops of Legacy started. No one believed in that project. And how you got there today. Well, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored and, you know, very excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. When we were having lunch together, and should I call you Jeff? Yes. Or Sir Mayor, whatever <laughs> you prefer. If I call you just be me, you can call me Jeff. Jeff and I were having lunch. He said, Timmy, and I do these lunches. Will you come and be with me? So I had never dreamed there was this large of a group. Or <laughs> anyway, I thought they were going to sit down and six, ten of us talk about things. But I, I'm glad to see all of you here. Um, well, you can tell from my accent, I'm from East Texas. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually from Istanbul, Turkey, and um, I love telling my story because, um, you know, I don't know all of the excitement or things that I've done, but, you know, I came here from Turkey as a graduate student on a scholarship. I proudly say I'm American dream. Uh, my parents barely were able to put $130 or so in my pocket, and I arrived New York City 40 years ago. July this year was the 40th anniversary. So, um, so I lived the dream, and I am proud to say that. And so I don't want to bore you with my life story, but you know, I lived in New York about a year, and 39 years ago I came to Dallas, and um, how did I get into real estate? It was totally coincident. It wasn't any plan. I was getting my MBA, actually, at North Texas University. We can proudly say that. Go me in green. And, and, uh, and, uh, so, but I like playing soccer, and on a soccer field, I run into a guy that was in real estate. He says, I need someone like you to help me. I joined his firm in 19... Uh, 80, and here I am, you know, 38 years ago, you know, become, a, I guess, a real estate developer. Uh, so that's how it started. And then, um, how did I involve with Legacy Project about 20 years ago? I came to see a real estate director of uh, EDS and, and, and talked about they wanted to do something front of their headquarters and and they wanted to do for Legacy Business Park. Uh, after discussions, I said, I will involve, but I won't do this if it was for just on the Legacy, but more Metroplex-wide. And at that time, as you said, a lot of people, certain the Stonebriar Mall was being built by General Growth. Topman announced the Villauban Mall, so people thought that I was crazy to build this development between these two uh, huge developments, one in Frisco, one in Plano there. So uh, despite of people saying that you're crazy, uh, we made Shops of Legacy, Legacy Town Center happen. And and if you like me to go jump to Legacy West, obviously we can, or... Yeah, I mean, I'm, this is a, can you hear me? There we go. Um, one thing I'd love for you to touch on is you are way ahead of your time because now the, the live, work, play concepts of development are commonplace and you know everyone accepts those, but at the time, you were really leading edge. 
because at that time, development was very much segregated and separated by use. You know, talk to us about the vision, how you got people to buy into that. Uh, you know, the, the 20 years ago, the mixed-use project that, again, it was pretty much, but for me, it wasn't. Growing up in Turkey, living uh, certainly uh, my college years in Germany, uh, I've seen the European way of living, the outdoor cafes and uh, seating areas and engaging people in the street level. And then also, when you looked at uh, America's original history in, the, in a little town center, had the blacksmith live, you know, working, and then he had his house. So, the, But over the decades, suburban developments um, spread everywhere. Uh, but I thought that it would be great to bring everything into the center. So if we, and that was really the way that we start Legacy Town Center, white sidewalks, landscaping, every detail as you said, whether it's the music that plays outside, whether it's the banners, fountains, all of that lights makes that place and the people want to be there, want to be seen, mingle with others. So we created uh, you know, legacy town center, which has been hugely successful. And I do want to jump to Legacy West and tell that story, but I, I do have a confession to make, which is occasionally my wife and I do actually leave Frisco. <laughs> and what we do, what we call market research. <laughs> and as part of that market research, Haywire has now become one of my wife's favorite restaurants um, outside of Frisco. Um, but it's, you know, it's a, an exciting development, quite honestly. You know, we always talk about as a region, when there's great projects in other cities, it helps our, our residents win. Legacy West and the amenities it brings is good for Frisco. What the colony's doing with things like Lava Cantina and those kinds of things is good for Frisco because our residents enjoy it. Um, but now we're ready for some of that stuff in Frisco. So, but talk to us about Legacy West and your, your vision for that and just how you secured all these corporate relocations in such a short amount of time? So as I was building Legacy Town Center, obviously I had my eye on the west side of the highway and GC Penny Corporation purchased that land, total of 355 acres, uh, early 80s. They used only 110 acres for their core campus. They had an extra 245, 50 acres. And so really it was about eight, nine years ago I started talking to Mike Oldman, the ex-CEO of uh, JCPenney and, uh, and kind of never gave up the idea of getting that land. It was uh, 2014 that we announced Legacy West development. Uh, and in, in shocking speed, even to my own, uh, you know, surprise that in less than four years you've seen what happened there. Um, I think uh, partially it was luck. Uh, you know, I get a lot of credit, but you know, Toyota was certainly a, a jump start the project. I did not even know it was. Uh, Toyota North American headquarters, uh, very reputable brokers, JLL, they came to see me, they said, you're going to be happy. Uh, we can't tell you, and it was under the code name NAI, I believe, and uh, so it happened very quickly. And, and I found out that, you know, Toyota looked 110 cities over four years period uh, throughout the whole country, scaled down to the state of Texas, when we ever look in Texas, it was um, San Antonio, Austin, Houston, Dallas area, and once they started looking Dallas, singled out, uh, they liked our location. So, um, I mean, I can talk obviously days long about what I do, I love doing that, but <laughs> with, the, with the time. So the... Once we have Toyota and why did they choose us, the number one, obviously, we're about 20 minutes away from Love Field Airport, 20 minutes from DFW, in the corner of two major highways, in you know, a toll road in 121, and you know, all the housing available. So, uh, in, in many other things, school district, whether it's in Frisco, whether it's Plano, all the neighboring things, and Toyota loved it. 
and you know, that gave me the confidence that I could build uh, another retail development across from Legacy Town Center, and 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 you know, obviously having the right partners, uh, you know, on the Legacy West, you know, one of the largest uh, investment uh, fund managers, Invesco, is my partners, and. He said, I want to build it all, not just piecemeal, but build the entire Legacy US. So it's a huge uh, development. And, and we were able to finish it less than two years. And so what other the companies in you know, today's world, uh, they want to have their um, employees to have amenities. Their goal is to attract talent, but not only attract talent, retain the talent. So whether it's Liberty Mutual or Toyota or Chase, they are looking after the same type of employees. And uh, you know they need to compete to find the talent and retain the talent. Therefore, when we talk about the amenities that we can offer, and, and my uh, level also that it was easy. You know, our city manager, George, here in Frisco, always says, for you, it's easy. You can tell these companies, hey, look at what I built across the street. I'm doing that again. So I think that it was very important that the companies felt uh, comfortable that we could deliver, deliver in timely manner uh, for them because they are relocating their people from all over. And... Uh, and delivering the quality they expected, and so they are extremely happy being at Legacy West. That's great. And we are gonna save some time for questions, so be thinking of your questions. Um, since we're at the star, I have to use a football analogy because um, giving y'all some history, all the projects that went to Plano, Frisco actually bid for as well, very aggressively. And at the time, I was a council member, and I got really annoyed watching Femi and Plano continue to spike the ball in the end zone. <laughs> and so as mayor, I decided I'm just going to go draft him to my team. <laughs> now I'm ready to score some touchdowns. So let's talk about this field's property. What drew you to this property and this opportunity? Well, you know, again, um, I'm one lucky guy. What can I say? <laughs> Now, it's just, uh, you know, many people ask me questions over the years, Femi, you've done this, you've done Legacy so West, what's next? And my answer was often, hey, you know, you won the, in football terms, you won the Super Bowl uh, a few times, well, let's quit at top of the game. And I am not really. But, you know, Jeff done a great job at drafting me. <laughs> uh, but uh, what happened is that, you know, the Hunt family has been a long time family friend of mine and incredibly good people, uh, not only financial uh, capabilities, but quality people, integrity, loyalty, many, many things. So I haven't done any business with them, but through friendship. So uh, they came and said, hey, there is this property, it's legacy kind of property, we're very interested, what do you think? So they were simply seeking my opinion and uh, pursuing the property, and then uh, I looked at it, obviously I heard, and um, I said, hmm, well, maybe I'm not retiring. So, and, and certainly the great location and all of the characteristics of the property and, uh, you know, the future that is heading north, uh, I felt comfortable that was a great project for me to involve. And really it happened uh, in a blistening speed for me in less than four months, my involvement. So plans are... And, and, and some of the slides that you're seeing is not actually my work. Uh, it was done by uh, Mr. Fields' estate, and because at the time they were thinking that they were going to go ahead and try to have the estate develop the property. Uh, but they, they, they decided that uh, selling was the best choice, and, and I was very, very fortunate to be able to have this group um, that that we could acquire, and obviously the you know your support, Jeff, and and our city manager's support, and a uh, long time, and and I think George or maybe the, your president always used to say, Femi, 
uh, we're training you over there. Real job is going to be Frisco for you. So here we are. <laughs> Plano, Plano was just practice for right. Frisco. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so I know we have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of visioning to do. Um, but maybe just paint a picture um, for the audience as far as kind of your vision for the property and, and what you see. Well, and as I said, really, it hasn't been long enough for me to dive into it. Um, you know, I do a lot of things, and I'm just saying the way that everything is. And people wonder. I go to meetings with Toyota, Chase, Liberty Mutual, and they think that Caron Company has 100 people uh, working and all that. I will walk into meetings many times. I say, this is it. This is what you see. And a lot of things that really I've done with very small group of people. Uh, I am, I always involve direct the project. I don't have three, four, five, six different projects. I focus one project. So I can pledge you that that will be the case here. Um, that, um, so uh, vision, I really, uh, the big vision is this. We, as the partners uh, with Hunt, uh, and Trevor Rees Jones family that we, this is a incredible jewel located in an incredible place and the topography, history, all of that makes this uh, or dictates itself, commands that something extraordinary. What that is, is obviously we're going to uh, define in the next six, eight months, or hopefully sooner with the zoning, entitlements, and, and, and things. But obviously, world-class development that comes in mind that, that and we can, you know, hopefully uh, attract next big Toyota. Uh, that will be goal uh, for us to achieve. So, you know, obviously, we have not, have been able to create our brand. So we don't even have a name. So Jeff, text me, uh, you know, after the Dallas Morning News made the announcement and it referred us uh, Fields Headquarters Tank, and that's not the name. Uh, we're having difficulty really finding, so please think about it, what should be, but, <laughs> uh, you know, the finding the right name that we can brand it, trademark it, and all of that is extremely important for this quality. So we're working on it. Um, you know, there's many things that we have to do, uh, and then we haven't really created materials, a master plan, the other tools that we'll have to go front of uh, corporations. So if there is an RFP process, that's called request for proposal, and I will definitely hear XYZ company, or if they are using a, a code name, uh, we will hear, and then we will certainly present this property in the best way that we can. Well, you have an active group here of a lot of creative people. So one thing that's important to Phoebe is that the whole tract is um, branded, just like Legacy was, or you hear about Alliance, or those kind. when you hear about these you know, strong terms, you know exactly what they're talking about. They're trying to think of the name for this development, wanting it to kind of focus on the topo topography and views and those kinds of things. So when he refers to it, you know exactly what we're talking about, where it's located. So if anyone has an idea, think of it and tell us by the end. You, <laughs> you may go down as legendary as the person who actually named the northern part of Frisco. Um, now, one of the things when we had that first lunch that intrigued me is you said, it's not your vision to just recreate Legacy West, as successful as that's been, that you wanted to look at this and it's standalone, you know, on its own. Speak, speak to that. Look, Legacy West, uh, 250 acres. So of that, we use 210 acres of it close to for corporate uses. So, uh, you know, the Toyota, Liberty Mutual, Chase, FedEx, took most of the land and the, the mixed use. And by the way, thank you for going haywire, helps pay the rent, and I can collect this month. <laughs> but <laughs> the, no, the, so that uh, the comparing like SOS, as you put on the map there, uh, it's a very small portion. If you're talking like SOS, the, the mixed use component where you see the restaurants and that kind of thing. Certainly, uh, we see, uh, uh, possibility of that when I talk to amenities 
uh, to attract the corporations. You know, if you're going to, we have to create the, those kind of amenities. And whether the size and scale of that, they really the demand the market time. But uh, the vision is the uh, everything you said. The, you know, uh, think of the character of the property. Keep the, the, uh, the market, the time, the demand, the corporate, all of that has to come into uh, the master planning of this property. Uh, I can tell you that we will be getting the best master land planners on table with us. So I'm not shy to express my opinion and what works, what doesn't, but we will bring those consultants. We will bring the right people and, and then share with you and council and, 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 and move forward. So the, again, there is not a specific plan today to say that we're going to start in uh, two years from now a, another Legacy West project. But it will be designed to accommodate Legacy West kind of project in the overall master plan. Well, now I'd love to just turn it over to you, the audience. I hope you've been thinking of questions because this is a great opportunity for us. Um, who's going to be the first brave person to ask the first question and kind of get us rolling and started? There we go. With the Brinkman Ranch property just south of this development, how is that going to impact your time frame and your thinking uh, in developing this project? Again, I, I really, I'm going to focus what I do. You know, so when you look at the uh, legacy, you have Haggard's land, other land, and all that. Our group has to think what this 2,600 acres is. How do we plan it for future, but also for immediate needs? So, you know, we're in the realities. We're also in the very uh, end of a real estate cycle. So when you purchase this size of a pro uh, land, you have to think not immediately what's going to happen next two, three years. There is a possibility. We liked it. I mean, when I started Legacy West, I said it may be a 10-year project. We just happened to finish it in four years. So we want a master plan site that gives us the flexibility in time. And I don't really honestly care what happens in the West and East and South. I just need to focus on these to make that vision reality. Yeah, and I think I'd add to that that I think this project will have more impact on Brinkman than maybe the reverse. You know, the Brinkman track is going to be another opportunity for the city of Frisco to master plan a large area at one time. It's further east. It's east of Preston. I think the campus, University of North Texas campus, going directly adjacent to that parcel will probably have a lot of influence on what gets, gets built on that tract. And then as well, as well as how this develops, I think that energy is just going to push to the east and only help the Brinkman track when they get ready to develop that. Way back in the back, Tomas. Stand up, Tomas. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm from East Texas as well, as many of you know here. So, um, Love your country. Been to uh, Istanbul, been to Izmir, Antalya, Alanya. I love your country. So uh, I have a question outside of, uh, out of that topic. Uh, as probably many of you don't know, you serve on the board, executive board for Cox School of Business at SMU. With the respect to colleges in the room, I went to SMU, uh, and uh, I'm curious to see if you can maybe help us uh, get a satellite campus in Frisco, or <laughs> there's a satellite campus in Plano of Tennyson Parkway, but maybe you can help us with that, and Mayor Cheney as well. Well, the question is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I am on the SMU's Cox School of uh, Business Board there. Um, the, the SMU actually is going to close Plano campus um, and they are selling that site and they are going to focus their core campus. There is no plan that it may change in the future, 
the satellite campus hasn't done the level they expected and they feel uh, bringing everything into uh, their existing campus. So I don't see that in the near future. Will it change? North Texas may have a veto power. <laughs> so I do not know that. Yes. Hi, Dawn Cruzan with Camp Craig Allen. So welcome to Frisco, first of all. Um, we, um, in, we are trying to work on a development project ourselves to bring to you. And uh, we just want to let you know, internally we call it the field of dreams. So we offer to share that name with you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, my question is, do you like barbecue? I like barbecue? Great. Yes, I do. But whether barbecue likes me, that's a different question. <laughs> she runs a big barbecue, so you may end up being a celebrity judge. My guess is she's going to come find you after this event. <laughs> what other questions you all have? Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, PGA? Is that part of this, the development with the PGA golf course? And uh, There's always that one guy at the party. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, 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 I will say that no comment to question. <laughs> but, uh, Jeff? You're going to punt that to me, aren't you? <laughs> You're the CEO, I'm the quarterback. <laughs> um, we have a lot of exciting opportunities that we hope to announce here in Frisco very soon. Buenas tardes. Hello, how are you? Buenas tardes. Buenas Mucho tardes. gusto. Maria Uceda, and uh, I have been living in this area for many, many years. I hail from South America, and uh, I invite you to visit our beautiful countries uh, in South America for inspiration. Three years ago, uh, we looked at developing a surgical village with Dr. Christopher Crowe, who's very prominent in the Frisco area. Uh, we'd love to bring um, the concept of an uh, ambulatory surgery center that would be available for our businesses. Um, I don't know if there's any plans for um, integrating uh, a concept like this in this um, development that you have. Okay. I mean, I have really not participated in a medical facility. Could it be a possible? I, I really don't know. But I also served in the Texas uh, Healthcare uh, Board. Uh, and uh, my wife is at the UT Southwestern Medical and a lot of friends with the Scottish Rite. So I'll check with them. So what the needs are in the marketplace, you know, that because we have a number of healthcare facilities popping up everywhere, but you know, I will not rule out that possibility. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of hospitals here represented. And one thing that's great is all the hospitals that are coming to Frisco are including research into their components, and I think those connections would be great for you to make to see how you can integrate those. Thank you. Just be loud. Just be loud. All right. So, you're amazing, by the way. <laughs> Are you talking to him or me? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> now, the, the really true story in life is um, not being, being a religious thing, but I strongly believe in God. I believe destiny. Um, so the, the biggest thing that happened to me, as I was telling, I didn't want to take a lot of your time, but I married well. Uh, my wife and I had nothing when we got married 36 years ago, barely put thousand dollars together 
to have our wedding. But, but she is an industrial engineer, graduate of Auburn University, and uh, 37 years ago she was working for uh, Dallas Power and Light. Uh, so being a female engineer in a male-dominated industry, she was rising star. So she was, when we got married, ladies, you know, uh, and, and she was making twice the money that I was making. And so her having a steady job and income, and a real estate cycle in, those of you many people young here, but 19, late 80s, real estate crash happened. Savings and loans failed. A lot of institutions, Mercantile Republic, those banks failed. But anyway, a lot of people in real estate went to car salesmanship, insurance sales, whatever they did, and I was one of them. I said, I speak different languages, maybe I go work for it. My wife said, honey, you love what you do, you're good at it, what I make is enough for us to take care of our needs, stay in it. So that was the big milestone for me. After that, I was able to put uh, groups together, investment groups, and, and start buying properties from uh, RTC, at the time Resolution Trust Corporation, one thing to another, led, and then uh, while I was doing that, I saw an opportunity in a corner in Coppel that turned into a 15-acre development with Nations Bank, Blockbuster, believe it or not, at that time, Blockbuster was hot commodity. That led into a MacArthur Crossing development at 635 and LBJ that was 110 acres. I had Baylor Hospital, I had Albertson. That put me in Dallas map. So that was 1994. People said, actually 1992, I started, who is this guy? You know, and, and that was my big breakthrough. And then after that, I built more Albertson type of centers. And, and then EDS opportunity came in 1998. And, you know, I mean, I can't talk hours long, but EDS real estate director at the time said, look, we're big company, we talk big corporations, lawyers, committees, and they were talking to some national groups like Heinz and all that. She said, you will be the horse I ride. I'm gonna bet on you. And her bet paid off, and, and I was able to involve in that project. And the rest of it, history. So, if you wanna have a vow renewal with your wife, I know a place to <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that, that's, that's my story. <laughs> There's a lot of, of mention of the topography of this land and the changes in elevation. Can you tell us your plans for taking, uh, what opportunities this will bring uh, from your perspective for this land? Well, again, you know, those are specific engineering related questions uh, and some of the things that working there that we can't talk yet and hopefully we'll make those announcements. Those are the part of whole topography. You know, the question was asked earlier. So that absolutely uh, maintain the certain topography, create the residential development around it with vistas and hills will be in that part of, and where we are more to the uh, east and the toll road will be more of the corporate campus mixed use kind of development. Um, first thing I'd like to mention that I, last thing I saw there's an opening, so I was recommending Valhalla or Frisco. Um, <laughs> but also um, Valhalla of Frisco is what I said. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, also as a small business owner, I, I would like to ask or recommend or hope that you're also going to look at some of the smaller local companies as you develop this property, making sure that there's lots of opportunities for, I, mean, I know you mentioned the Hunt Brothers and things like that, and there's lots of, lots of opportunities, but I hope you can um, use the local businesses as well. Sure. Absolutely. Good comment. Thank you. Any other questions? We have one right here at the front. Is there going to be an attempt to have some more green space and um, neighborhoods that are more friendly for people to interact with each other? Where I grew up in Ohio, 
and we didn't have alleyways to come in and so we'd actually you know we'd all pull in the front you'd see all the neighbors come in and now um, I love my neighborhood I live in the canals but you only see the people in the alley the three or four people so I, I don't know if that's something that can change if it's a citywide thing but is there an attempt to try and have more neighborhood interaction and that was one thing that I noticed that was different from here in uh, Ohio. Thank you. I, I can probably answer that one better. So that, that is actually a passion of mine that I share. So the question was about open space. And so in the last year, um, the city of Frisco, we've actually redone all of our ordinances. So even for our residential developments, there's a minimum walking distance, literally, that you're allowed to have to get to a park in open space. Um, all of our commercial developments now require 10% open space. And it's not just the open space, you know, circling a tree by the road. It actually has to be congregated and useful and minimum distances in the middle of the development. And so you're starting to see those policy changes now come out of the ground. And so I'm really excited about that. So the future development in Frisco will be very much more like what you're talking about. Miriam Raphael, Workforce Development. Could you share with us the overall arch of the vision for this area? I'm sorry. Please. What is the new arching vision? Sorry. The vision of the whole land. But again, you know, truly, really, uh, my involvement has been very limited time. And I have not gotten my hands into all of these things except putting this partnership together and purchasing. It was very complicated uh, transaction, as you can imagine. Therefore, you know, really, as I said, these plans are not my plans. Uh, our group, our ownership group is going to dive into, work with the city officials and on the master planning of this. So that the vision will be. The only thing that I can tell you, we want it to be a world-class development, incorporate different uses because it's massive. It would have been easy for me to tell you if I was buying yeah, 200 acres, as Jeff said, uh, this is so large that it has to uh, master plan to really uh, for next decade or even more, you don't know. I mean, if you talk about legacy, uh, my portion has been very successful, very fast, but if you think about history, it is about 2,600 acres. Mr. Pearl, ADS purchased the land and in late 70s, and legacy just finishing up as a land. So they're consuming 2,600 acres and creating uh, something is very challenging, uh, the, the market demand, many other factors. So our goal is right now to be the best stewardship uh, of that steward and create a plan with the city official that we can implement a plan. So, you know, who knows if there is another company, people joke with me, are you gonna bring Amazon here? It's very too late, we can't do that. But maybe next Amazon that we will be in the front of that. Here is this, here's what we can do, here's the amenities we can supply then, residential component. You know, uh, that has to be a big part of this. And whether it's a single family, expensive homes because of the things, or, you know, the mid price range homes, uh, as well as, you know, I know it, I, I'm here just putting me in spot, but there is, will be a multi family component of this development uh, because if you're going to attract companies and they will have to have those things in their nearby for their employees' uh, housing. Not everybody can you know, afford the three, four hundred million dollar homes. Will we have it? Yes. <laughs> We're hoping we have the million plus dollar homes. Uh, so all of that really uh, kind of a premature for me to say what exactly is going to be. Only thing that, you know, my vision to be able to, and you can look at everything we've done last 20 years in legacy is work class. That's a, you know, highest level that we pay attention to detail. And I'm really proud to say the people that I'm partner with have that kind of vision. You know, these legacy families, they don't go there and purchase these size of a land. We don't just to, you know, to, 
Okay, we'll take one more, and then we'll close it out so you guys can, can network. I think we – do you have one here? Femi, you partially um, answered my question already. And you could, if, could you please share with us, if not, I understand. Companies have changed, like Blockbuster's demise and some other companies like Pure One struggling now to stay relevant. Do you have a wish list, whether it applies from Legacy or to Frisco, your top five companies that you have a wish list you think about each night when you – Put your head down on your pillow like these are the companies I wish to attract or I wish to, to bring to these developments. Can you share that with us? Or? No, I really don't have a wish list. Um, the only thing I can tell you, you know, what I've learned last you know, uh, several years more, last seven years, is that we are very lucky. We're all very lucky to live in Texas, great state. And we're very fortunate to be in North Texas, and we're very fortunate to be in Plano, Frisco area, without question. So, uh, and and the, the companies want to move out of states like California. I mean, it made a huge difference. And Toyota done studies, and it impacted bottom line of their employees close to 17, 18 percent that is left in their pocket. So they don't have to deal with the bureaucracy of the state, whether it's Illinois, whether it's the state of Washington, California. So the, the, the business friendly environment, the school system, housing and all that is going to continue to attract. So when we looked at this project, we may be at the, uh, the top of the cycle. We don't know who knows what's going to happen. It has been a great cycle, but uh, the property is going to be here. And I hope that I can be here to see it, and hopefully it will be faster speed. We certainly hope. Uh, but uh, the the companies decide they want to get out. There are a lot of them in Illinois, California. It continues to attract. So you know, uh, who knows uh, what next big company? And I'm, I'll just say to Boeing Global Services. You know, Boeing has three divisions. Uh, one of the divisions become my tenant at Legacy West. Yeah, so it's a great company, but it's only one division. Maybe they'll like it so much that they decide four or five years they want to get out of Chicago. I would love to bring Boeing uh, to Texas, North Texas, to Frisco. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a top five list I'll share with you to get work, working on. So. Um, we're going to bring Jeff out to, to close us um, back out. I appreciate you all um, being here. It was truly my honor to be able to personally introduce you to Femi, someone whose work I've been in Iowa for many years, even before I was a city councilman, just watching him um, from, from afar. Um, I got him to, here today because he actually gave me his cell phone number, and so now we have a text chain. And literally, he was out of the country, and I'd send him a text, and he would respond in five minutes. Um, but I got him here today by saying that I was having a lunch with a few friends. <laughs> and would he mind coming and having lunch with my friends and sharing his vision? Um, I didn't tell him it'd be 150 to 200 people, but I thank you for um, being here. Um, and please just join me in giving him a warm yeah. welcome to Frisco. Thank you. thank you, Femi. Thank you, Mayor. Again, thank you for allowing us to have this opportunity to host this wonderful Mayor's Roundtable Luncheon. All right. Have a great day. Thank you.